Hello guys, this is Erze Schim. I'm in my hangar to show you the DIY goggles or face box as I like to call it. This thing here. And yes, it it looks like a box. It's EPO styrofoam type of thingy. It comes in two halves and it has a great 5 inch display, 800 by 480 pixels, 16 by 9 aspect ratio and it has just a Fresnel lens, that's a plastic, plastic lens which is thin but has uh, little circles that do an optical uh, effect of a, of a lens. Three really, really cheap and easy to glue together components that make a great Great video goggles alternative. You can't really call them goggles. Yeah, it's a monitor in a box uh, which you mount to your head. And it looks like this. You can see yourself in the cam now. Okay, it, it looks even more nerdy or weird than a, than a fat shark. So it's maybe a downside on the optical side of the story but it really has a lot to offer. And what uh, I'm going to show you now. First to the outsides. Um, as I told you here is the here's the display mounted. Uh, I show you in the build uh, video how it's done. Uh, I cut the slice here to access the three menu buttons. It's the middle is the menu button up and down, but you don't need them really often. It's just for brightness and uh, color saturation. Then directly from the controller board, which is on on the back of the screen, uh, is the video out cable. It comes with it. I just glued it here in place and for security and not to tear something out here's a cable tie and the cable distribution. So uh, you don't need the white cable I just plugged it in so it has more more support and uh, for power source you have this red connector which looks yeah, odd but it's uh, exactly the same you use on the Fetchak goggles so just plug it in this way yep. and I have an image huh. uh, you just can't believe how huge the image is um, let me see if you huh? it's tricky but it works yeah I, I just don't get the whole image on it it's tricky, but maybe you see the quality. Hi. If I hold it that way, you see that the Fresnel lens, it's just on a movable frame part. So you basically just can uh, slide it further uh, to, the, to the monitor or, or further to your nose and that affects the, the sharpness so but at the moment I think it's it's quite sharp so that's the changed color setting okay that's about the best image I can get for you so as you see the quality through the goggles is quite amazing one thing I noticed though if you have like, uh, shut up. <laughs> uh, if you have like really fast yaw movement, I, I'm not sure if the video shows it. On, on yaw movements, you get uh, line distortion or inter. Maybe it's interlacing effect. I don't know. It doesn't look that nice. You don't get it too much from from the nick. 
off on the roll axis, but from the yaw axis, yeah, that's not as bad as I thought. Yeah, have we have we done a, a leg comparison? No, no, we haven't. I'm just trying to snap in front of the cam and see the reaction on the display, and it's like immediately. So uh, the display here doesn't incorporate a lot of uh, lag, so that won't keep us from flying this uh, mini quad. And I thought that while having these on, I should also power up the the really expensive but also really great Dominator HD to have a, a directly comparison about the size, about the impression you get when you fly with it. I try to describe the difference between looking through a uh, Dominator and through the box. So the Dominator has a very clear picture, but you have to, as, as many uh, had issues with it, you have to uh, press it really firm to your to your eyes. The distance between eyes and, and monitors shouldn't be big. And some of, of you have... I have to use diopters, so it's um, yeah. kind of blurry on some edges. It gets foggy if you don't apply anti-fogging uh, measures. But it's like you're really directly into the picture. So compared to this here, I mean, this is really bright, almost no distortion, no uh, a slight amount of barrel distortion in the image maybe, and the picture is huge. This one has no barrel distortion at all, so this has better optics. Fat shark, it's a straight image, but depending on your position, it, it's not always as sharp as it should be. This is some distortion, and it even looks sharper. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe me. Move it. Yeah, you don't get interference lines. Uh, uh, the picture on the fat shark looks more natural. You have no sharpness controls over the, the monitor. You just just brightness, contrast, color saturation, zoom uh, four by three or sixteen by nine. Uh, the language. Yeah. That's about it. You're really into it. So, one look again. That's huge. That's really a huge picture. So, what can I tell you about the difference between these two goggles? They're, of course, uh, much more convenient. I mean, they're really small. They have the receiver built in, they have the DVR built in. They would even have one of the best head trackers, uh, although I didn't use it to the moment. Uh, they look... You're not so much of a nerd if you're wearing them. I mean, yes, you're nerdy, but you look quite cool with it. Uh, reminds me of Charlie Love Watch, if you know him from Star Trek, of course. So, these are, from a fashion point of view, <laughs> these are looking better. Okay. Um, the price tag, around five to six hundred euro. Really expensive. Um, this is 70 euros, <laughs> so that's about almost uh, 10 times cheaper and around let's say two three hours of build time if you're really making it trying to make it nice or if you do it the first time um, if you're a fast builder maybe you're ready in an hour or so and it's really easy it's gluing the two halves together you can do this at first and finding some foam that you cut in, in, in the right place and uh, mount the, the display on it. Gluing some some stripes here to uh, uh, help to hold the, the display in place. And then I put some salt into the 
the mounting of the straps here on the side because I figured that um, if it's just glued here and here and you tear it yeah the glue will come off and that's not a good thing so one thing I, I did the cut here to apply uh, to, to insert about two three millimeters of this uh, strap into the foam and glue it tightly here all of the area here is, is full of glue and then I came up with this uh, idea that uh, I need a cable tie which is trustworthy and to have it uh, not just uh, damaging the foam you use a plastic on both sides uh, on the inside and on the outside so it squeezes it together and really holds tight the the strap yeah the strap uh, it came with a with a adjustable it came with these uh, two parts so you could cut the strap and adjust the length but yeah I just found it okay the way it is of course you have to test it it shouldn't be too loose and if you're into head banging you're gonna lose your goggles but it's it's about okay. Yeah, and here on the front I just took some other foam on the main surfaces. I may have to cut some more out of the nose nose shape here because it yeah. affects my nose. Uh, one, one question uh, that arises with displays is do they blue screen? If, if the signal really gets bad do they switch to a complete blue screen and maybe take three seconds before they pop, uh, uh, before they come back from a bad signal? No, they don't. They do black screen. <laughs> but this black screen really just comes if you have a really a lot of noise. I'll show you here in this compassion, uh, uh, here in this test, I put my my phantom right in the next room and no antenna on the receiver uh, and holding the hand. Uh, blocking the signal a bit to provoke bad signal you see really noisy but the monitor keeps up and then at some point uh, it it breaks the signal but it comes back really within uh, parts of a second so it's, it's really fast to reacquire the image so not an issue here uh, so far I had just one flight with the Phantom and the Phantom is easy to fly so yeah, the image was great and I had this one situation where I flew directly over over myself and came to a, uh, to a receptional uh, zero signal situation where the monitor shut down to black screen for a fraction of a second that was frightening but if you know that it comes back like instantly it's, it's not a big issue it really worked great and it uh, yeah it was in in the in bright sunlight and I had no light or almost no light coming in so that was great it felt really yeah really if you were in front of a huge TV screen um, yeah just um, one impression I had though with the life out from GoPro it felt like it was not high resolution enough so you get such a big screen in front of your nose and it's only it's not 800 by 480, it's rather 6, 640 by 480, if it's 43, yeah. So it's standard definition, it's slower resolution than the Dominator HD, okay. It's sharp, so you will really see the OSD on the screen uh, totally sharp, but the content of the screen uh, is, is low resolution. Uh, so that's a matter of uh, of broadcasting a video signal analog way today. If we can uh, move to HDMI video transfer with no lag and have like an uh, 720p display in here or maybe even full HD, then those face boxes really get get to be awesome. Uh, if you don't have uh, good goggles now. Or if you have just uh, if you have a, a screen, then
and this at the moment is the cheapest and best way to go if you can afford it this is the best way to go Let, let's put it that way you don't have to build something here and you get a really good and decent product out of the box um, I've also been asked by you sometimes which is better for a beginner uh, is it using a, a monitor like this uh, Black Pearl with integrated receiver or is the goggles uh, is using goggles easier or better well that depends on if you fly this this type of crafts which are really small fast agile and not stabilized uh, you will not get away with the monitor from my experience it's really hard because with a monitor you're not into the picture as much as you should be you get uh, distracted by other things uh, be it sunlight or just that you not always look at the monitor uh, from the same angle so uh, fast uh, monitor no if you have if you fly the phantom with stabilized flight characteristics and stabilized picture cam then a monitor is great maybe it's even better because if you fly with the phantom you may be into aerial filming you don't do action flights you just uh, try to capture a nice scene um, maybe you uh, hover in place and, and just let the camera do its work or maybe look down uh, the monitor can even be better because uh, in these conditions you just uh, look for the framing of the shot and you may also want to look up on the craft and, and flying a mix between line of sight and FPV so for aerial work and phantoms I would rather recommend you a monitor if you have nothing yet this is also quite a cheap option because uh, these go around 200 dollars or uh, let's say 200 euros which is a bit more but you already have a diversity receiver built in so that makes it <laughs> two antennas that's no antenna you can have two antennas uh, uh, attached to different ones like I have here for example um, and two different antennas is better for the for the signal reception you can have a one uh, directional antenna and one one unidirectional um, and I gotta do another test video where I compare the the quality and the reception strengths the sensitivity of the built-in black pearl diversity against immersion RC duo 58 so thanks for watching this Lama review. I encourage you to build this one. Um, yeah, I publish you the, the part list. Uh, you can, you should uh, check out the description of this video because I have all of the information on my blog as well, and I have links to where I get the parts. Um, I'm not sure yet if there's another source for the display. I got it from Deal Extreme and they were really slow, uh, slow on shipping. I ordered from European warehouse, but it really came from China to Netherlands and from Netherlands to Austria. So it took three or four weeks, which was not nice. The build is really easy. If I can do it, you can do it for sure. So thanks for watching. Bye.